Over the past year or so, uh, popular protests against private prisons, these de detention centers, the, the network of concentration camps that we've got set up uh, along the border and throughout the country, uh, they've been growing. Opposition to these organizations, the waste of money, the unethical behavior, and uh, the companies that run them, they're starting to feel the pressure. And one CEO of the GEO Group, uh, this is George Zoli, wrote uh, an internal email that was uh, leaked to TYT that said that uh, Representative Alexandria Casa Cortez and uh, the Jewish activist group Never Again Action are misguided individuals who defamed the American flag. So GEO Group CEO, not a fan of these protests, went on to say, uh, this is actually a spokesperson said, organizations that have threatened our employees or taken violent action against our company have also directly used the same terminology as Representative Ocasio Cortez, including concentration camp. I would argue they've used the same terminology because it's 100% true. Now, she has responded to this attack from the GEO group tweeting, if there's any CEO in the country that I'd be honored to go toe to toe with, the CEO of the largest for profit private prison corporation would definitely be up there. Guess what, GEO group? Your entire business, the caging of humans for profit, is immoral and should be outlawed, which is strong. And, you know, inject that sort of attack against them right directly into my veins. Joining us now in the program is the man responsible for this story being a story in the first place. This is a senior investigative reporter for TYT Investigates, Ken Klippenstein. Welcome back to the show. Hey man, great to be on here. Uh, how's it going? So uh, you got those internal, internal emails leaked to you. You got the AOC bump on your story. You've gotta be feeling good for the, the hard work that you've done. So uh, to tell me about this story, about what was revealed by these internal emails. I think that um, what it showed was that the CEO is furious about um, not just AOC, but the movement um, behind her that uh, is really standing up in the form of um, protests, but also public rhetoric too, um, to the to the practices of these um, ICE facilities. Um, if you look through the email, and I link to it in the story, um, it's very strong language, especially for the CEO of the largest prison company in the country. Um, you know, these folks tend to be a little more self-regulated in terms of how they yeah. uh, come off and professionalism. So I think he was, I, I think they're feeling the heat, like you said. So uh, th this was uh, intended to be an internal email sent to people inside of the company. Um, we can't know for sure, but what does it seem like the objective of this was? I mean, it couldn't just have been to vent to his employees. Well, I can tell you that the reason that my source provided it um, to me uh, was because they were outraged. Um, at just the overt um, political posturing within the email. If you read it, it seems very clear that he's trying to get his employees to think that um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is opposed to their material interests and coming after them in some way. Of course, she's coming after the institution, um, you know, of uh, how immigration is being prosecuted under this administration, and then also the conditions at these facilities. Um, but of course, she doesn't have any animus for workers or anything like that. Uh, yeah, certainly not. She's standing up for them more than their CEO ever will. Um, in the letter, uh, the GEO executive states that they have never been involved in criminal justice or immigration laws, that, like sort of implying that there's this like like hard line between them, the recipients of the funds, and the actual crafting of the legislation. Is that true? Which is preposterous. I mean, they um, it, this is this was attached to the email that was sent to some employees, um, and it includes a kind of like. Um, List of here's what we do and here's what we don't do. And it was a very, you know, PR speak kind of thing. And you can't help but laugh if you know the slightest bit about immigration policy and what these things said. So, to answer your question, um, you know, that's extremely disingenuous. They contribute huge sums of money, mostly to Republicans, but also specifically to President Trump, his inaugural committee. Um, and they spend enormous amounts of money lobbying on um, homeland security issues. Um, detention issues. Uh, so I have no idea where they <laughs> got that from. If they're if the person who said it believed it. <laughs> now uh, the the protests against the the treatment of detainees, the conditions in these different facilities isn't uh, constrained to just one corporation. There are multiple corporations uh, that control them. But while we're on the subject of GEO Group, what do we know about the actual conditions inside of their facilities, the ones that they manage? Well, I would agree with the AOC uh, in what she said, which um, when she visited um, uh, CBP facilities, she called them quote horrifying. Um, and that's something that's not just borne out you know, by her, of course, she's a Democrat. Um, this is borne out by the Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General who actually investigated these conditions and themselves found that they were uh, shockingly bad. And you can read that report, it's public, it was put out very recently, I think this is um, it actually came around the same time um, as um, AOC's visit and um, this email. 
But, um, you know, I want to stress that is the federal government themselves, um, essentially a component of the DHS, who has obviously an interest in, you know, having uh, these facilities, uh, you know, these are huge contracts they have with them. And so even their own investigators um, found that the conditions were abysmal. Exactly, including I, I saw uh, there's a reference to nooses and detainee cells, inadequate detainee medical in care. The report. Exactly. It's literally in the executive summary of the report. It's not some kind of, you know, activist or something. It's just, I. It's shocking, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, uh, there's an also there's a reference in the in the letter uh, saying that their facilities have never been overcrowded or housed unaccompanied minors. Uh, do we know whether or not that's true? I find it hard to believe, but what do we actually know? No, it doesn't pass the laugh test. Um, they, you know, they are very proud in the email. Like we, we, you know, we we adhere to the Obama Biden standards, and specifically in that DHS report, I was just telling you about. They specifically say that those standards are not met. Yeah. Now, there's one last thing. Uh, this this goes a little bit outside of the, the bounds of this story alone, but uh, the the CEO made reference to the the sorts of language that are used by the activists and AOC, and I've noticed that. Um, especially since El Paso, there's been this renewed focus on the dangerous language on the right that seems to uh, encourage terror attacks. This feels to me like a both sidesing, like oh, AOC said that we're bad, our corporation's bad, and that's the same thing. She's calling us concentration camps, that's mean. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that there might be a sort of equivalence being made here on that? No, I don't think so. AOC has always been very clear that uh, you know she supports um, peaceful protests in opposition to these groups. And I want to add, I think that's dangerous to essentially instruct employees um, in the general public to believe that um, these violent attacks are become are because you know are because of an elected official, um, especially when that elected official there's no indication that she's ever supported any sort of um, political violence. So I think I think that's very dangerous. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Ken, as always, thank you so much for your hard work in breaking this story. It's only news because of uh, of what you did. I'm glad that AOC helped to signal boost it as well. Um, is there a way that people can get in touch with you if they have information? Yeah, I always encourage people reach out. Um, you can hit me on signal at 202-510-1268. That encrypts the messages and um, it's an important part of source protection. So um, if anyone has a tip about immigration generally, please reach me at that number. Ken Klippenstein, thank you as always. Thanks a lot, man. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.